All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Mortaza Karim Zadeh. I'm an assistant professor of geography here at CU Boulder. We do a lot of research using open geospatial data. I'll show you an example of our research on the mitigation policies implemented as increased social distance. So the big research question we are asking is that our localities in the U.S., mitigating outbreaks with increased social distance. We are looking at the counties in the U.S. For that, we need a lot of data, all of it available for free and openly. The case rates of COVID-19, we can get that from public health departments across the country. And then we also need mobility data, aggregated cell phone data that show how much people in this and that county move or increase or decrease their movement. We also need to look at some controlling variables including unemployment and median household income. Well, if people are not going out as much, is it because they're unemployed or is it because they tend to occupy jobs that allow them to work from home? We get this data from Bureau of Labor Statistics and the U.S. Census Bureau and American Community Survey. So as an example, we're looking at social distancing in May of 2020. We see the Pacific Northwest, the Bay Area, the Eastern Tri-state staying at home more rigorously than, let's say, some of the Midwestern counties here. But is that a function of unemployment or local infection rates? For that, we actually divide our data into the regional PACs and alliances that were formed as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. We can see the Eastern PAC states stayed at home way more compared to, let's say, the Midwestern PACs or the unaffiliated states. But the Sunbelt states that were also not affiliated did not go out as much as the Midwestern packs. However, how did that compare to local infection rates? Well, if we actually plot our data, the movement data, as a function of local infection rates, we see that there is huge increase in social distancing in the Eastern pack states compared to, let's say, the Sunbelt states, even though they, in fact, did not stay at home, it was not as much as it would be as a response to local COVID-19 infection rates. And we saw a huge outbreak in the month of July and August in the Sunbelt Southern states. So this is just an example of how we use open data in our research. It helps us with responsive research. We and a bunch of other researchers were able to get our hands on this data really fast and help influence policy to mitigate the pandemic. It's also replicable. Other researchers can confirm the veracity of our findings. He helps us foster collaboration without having to worry about data share agreements and institutional boundaries. The data is open there and out there for free. It really also helps us with teaching. We have been using these data sets in our teaching for predictive modeling of COVID-19 in our class and students really enjoy working with up-to-date data that is readily available. That was my presentation today. I hope students, if they occupy jobs in the future, they can advocate for making the data available openly to the public. Good luck.